Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar express, How to Have the Energy, organized by CIM Greater London. If you are a university student attending today's webinar, you may want to sign up for the CIM Marketing Club newsletter. It'll keep you up to date with the latest trends, innovations, and concepts in the marketing industry. All you need to do is take the photograph of the QR code you see on screen at the moment, and it will take you straight to the sign-up page on the CIM website. So I'd now like to hand over to Colette Hennigan, Founder and Managing Director of Optimum Living, who is our guest speaker today. Over to you, Colette. Thank you very much for that introduction, Phil. And I'm delighted to be here today talking to you about all things energy. And I would just like to do before we start is actually understand a little bit around how you are feeling today, because that's really important for me. So I'd like to launch a poll, so to get you thinking about your energy right from the offset. So if I could launch our first poll, which is, how is your energy today on a scale of one to five, with one being the lowest and five being the highest? So I'm really interested to see how you're all feeling on a Wednesday around lunchtime. So hopefully this will give me a little bit of an insight so I can actually start to tune into the areas that are gonna be really important for you to improve those energy levels. Just waiting for that to come in. Whilst I do that, I will just show you uh, my little book here. We have um, uh, my, my book, which is How to Have the Energy, all about the, the techniques and the tools that we can use, but in a really kind of practical manner, um, focused on things uh, like nutrition, but it's also got some other aspects about making habits stick and how these things can actually be integrated into our day-to-day -day lives in a more easy manner with not having to do kind of too much uh, revolution within our cupboards, within our lives, uh, because let's face it, we've already got enough on our to-do list. So I think I've just lost that poll. Did I, because I clicked on there? There it is, okay, brilliant. All right, so let's have a look at how, how you're all feeling. Okay, so most of you are around that three marker out of five. So that's kind of, you know, okay, okay-ish, getting by, getting stuff done, but not feeling brilliant. But there are a few of you, 4%, that are feeling great and fully energized and full of vitality. So high five to that 4%, that's brilliant. Um, hopefully I'll still be able to share with you some some useful things as well um, and then we have 4% on the flip side of that which is kind of just really struggling energy on the floor today struggle to get out of bed so as you can see we've got quite a range but we've also got quite an opportunity here with most of us around those middle areas and so just trying to elevate our energy just one notch up is going to make a big difference in terms of how we are so capable, what we're enabled to do in our days, how we see things, how we reflect on stuff, how we're able to actually use our creativity um, and apply all of our beautiful minds to whatever it is that you want to achieve. So let us take, I'm going to take off my camera now and I'll come back to you with the Q&A at the end. And I'm going to walk you through some key aspects of the book, How to Have the Energy. Chapter one within the book is called the High Energy Plan. And my co-author and I, who is actually the original productivity guy, he wrote the book, How to Be a Productivity Ninja. So you can imagine the way he thinks about food is very different to how myself, a nutritionist, thinks about food. But all of my work has been within working with people at work. So I also have quite a different uh, viewpoint into um, how we can integrate this into our lives and that really is the how and making it happen is my key focus because we have so much information out there on food and nutrition whether it's in just the newspaper that we pick up whether it's the headline that we click on whether it's on social media and so really it's kind of trying to simplify that and make it into a plan that is really easy for you to pick up but also starts to shift your mindset so these things stick around for the longer term okay so within the high energy plan we have nine points and today i'm going to cover over half so you'll get a real good idea of uh, you, really where we're coming from and our approach and how to make this work within your life so starting off one of the things that i was really really passionate about was getting people to tune in to how food made them feel and ensuring that you actually 
understand that you get to choose how you want to feel. Every time we make a decision on what it is that we're going to eat, we actually get the opportunity to say, is this going to give me the energy I need? And like I say, you probably have a lot of insights onto food already. There's lots of stuff that we know, you know, eat more fruit and veg and chew your food, sit down with your food. These things we don't always do, but these things are the things that are going to give us the energy. So using this as a question and starting to tune into this, so it's like changing the lens on food. It's not necessarily about an aesthetic and it's not about creating the most perfect looking plate. What it's about is that you feel better from eating the food than when you do when uh, when you're not eating the food. You know, so we should be getting a benefit from this. It can either feed you or it can kind of make you flat. And often what I see at this time of day in the afternoon in workplaces is that people are actually feeling a bit flat. Maybe in another hour or so, there's kind of like a key time of day where so many people, if you gave them a pillow under their head, they would definitely want to uh, put their head on it and have a short nap. And I understand why that is. You know, there's lots of things within our day that can interact that, but food is a major one. So starting to tune into yourself after a meal, before a meal, and making some really quick changes because you already have a lot of knowledge. It can be very, very powerful in moving your mindset from just, you know, I want abs, I want a bikini body, whatever that may be, but actually thinking, I want to feel alert, I want to feel great later. I've got lots going on with presentations, with the kids, with my family, you know, and as we're about to get more social again. Um, and so tune into that. And this is a really powerful thing that the more you do it consciously, it will start to actually uh, become more unconscious as you move through. So remember, you get to choose how you want to feel. It's in those very small daily choices and what you're putting on your plate. The second one, and one that I am super, super passionate about, is lunch. So lunch is not for wimps i don't know where it actually came from i think it was something in the 80s back on you know the movie wall street where uh, you know money doesn't stop and doesn't sleep and lunch is for wimps you know we all have to just kind of trudge on and just power ourselves through these days and what i've seen probably in the last 18 months is that as people have been more displaced and perhaps working more from home is that even though the kitchen's closer and a fridge and a fruit bowl is there they're actually less likely to take what I would say is a power lunch. And this isn't because it's a short lunch, it's because it's gonna give you the power for the afternoon. So just to check that you're still with us now, because what I'd really like to learn is right now, are you taking lunch um, as a power lunch? So if we could just launch that next poll, please. So how many days during the working week do you take your lunch away from a screen and eat at a table? So let me know, is this every day? Is it most days, occasionally? Or do you never do this? And as I say, some of the trends that I've been seeing have been a little bit um, interesting, as, uh, as I say, that lunch seems to have actually taken a back seat more recently than ever before. And as I say, this, this, this power lunch is, the way you eat is just as important as what you eat. So we've already tuned into that choice of you get to choose how you wanna feel, you know? so how you're gonna feel after a meal that's rushed, after a meal where you've got one hand on a keyboard and one hand on a sandwich. Uh, or maybe it is that you're on a call and you're you know, muting the call and chewing quickly and then quickly you know, swallowing so you can be the next person that speaks. All of these things, what they, they're not conducive to proper digestion. They're not conducive to you actually getting the power from uh, the, the food that it is that you're eating. And as you can see from here, we have uh, 20, just 24 percent of you are doing this every day. We have 30 uh, percent most days. So we've got just over 50 percent doing a decent amount of time and, and the gold standard of every day, which is brilliant. And actually, I have to tell you guys, I'm going to give you applaud you. That's, that, that's higher than I've seen um, in recent times. So you guys are switched on and taking that time. Um, and I, so I really think that's a, that's a great sign. But obviously, there's also quite a, a large proportion of us around 46 uh, percent that are only very occasionally or rarely you know doing uh, never doing this so I really want to sell to you how important this is and even those of you that are doing it every day um, I don't know if you're still 
um, you know, tuned in to work in some way or other, um, or how long you're taking. Maybe it's just a five five minute uh, lunch. But just to encourage you to actually make that a real integral part of your working day, because you are a priority and lunch actually should be on your to do list because it's so powerful in so many ways. So I want to share with you. This was some research that I was uh, really proud to to be able to feature within the book uh, because it really reflects how important this this meal in the middle of the day is so uh, kind of integral to how you perform. So if I haven't already uh, sold to you how important it is uh, so far, what if I told you that your judgment may be compromised if you don't take lunch like this? An interesting paper in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences describes how a team of researchers at Ben Gurion University of the Negev followed eight Israeli judges for 10 months and they ruled over a, a thousand applications made by prisoners to parole boards. It's so just thinking about parole, you'll think, mm, yeah, you know, what, what will look good for me on a parole board are probably my, um, you know, my, my be good behavior, the fact that I've got a really good lawyer, um, perhaps it is that, you know, I had no previous offenses. So, you know, that will give me a good case. But actually, the prisoners um, were obviously asking if they could have their conditions of incarceration changed. And at the start of the day, the judge granted around two thirds of the applications before them. But as the hours passed, that number fell sharply, eventually reaching zero. However, more rational decisions returned after the judges stopped for food. So come on, right? We think that it is our best solicitor, our previous good behavior, all of these different things that are gonna put us in a good position. But actually, it's the time of day that the judge is ruling on your parole that is, is the most important factor. So, you know, top tip there. Hopefully, I hope you're never in front of any judges in your lives. But if you are, get, try and get the first slot of the day or just after lunch, because I think it just shows how it puts us into this survival zone when we start to get hungry, when our blood sugars um, start to uh, lower. That um, when we last eight ultimately becomes incredibly important. And for the judges, where our body goes when we start to feel hungry like that, we go into our low risk. A low risk mode and so literally you know for them the low risk mode is to keep the prisoner in prison for us our low risk mode could be not to you know take that really innovative option and go down that line of questioning or ideas because you know we're hungry and we just don't realize this because you know we may not be feeling hungry or even giving ourselves the body the, the chance to recognize that you are hungry so having this in your to-do list every day Take lunch, it's not for wimps, it's for winners, and take a power lunch away from your screens. Really take time to chew the food, and I guarantee whatever it is you're eating, I'm hoping that it's gonna kind of feature some of the things I'm gonna talk about next, but whatever it is you're eating has the potential to feed you better and to energize your afternoons. Okay, so moving on to number three within our high energy plan. Don't eat food with its own jingle. I'm sorry, marketers, I know that uh, perhaps in your, the work that you do, you're, you're helping maybe some big brands with their jingles, with their marketing for, for food. But the general rule of thumb is that if it needs a, a marketing team and PR board to, to actually sell it to you, then it's likely that the nutrition elements of it um, are not gonna be the best. Because let's face it, the humble broccoli doesn't have its own marketing team. Yeah, it has so many incredible facets to it from vitamin C to sulforaphane, which is incredibly important for our cognition, you know, our thought processes. And, um, you know, it's also rich in lots of uh, B vitamins. You know, if you had a marketing team, they would have an absolute riot with all of its, its features and benefits. But it doesn't. So stuff that has to have that and has that, that, that whole team behind it generally means eat it occasionally. So um, I've got don't here, but you know, I have to be realistic and say there may be some things that feature in your cupboard that are actually um, you know, things that you really enjoy and you're only having a couple of times a week. But if it's something that's featuring every day, maybe it's a staple breakfast item that has a whole, a whole thing uh, selling it to you. I know there was a recent campaign with some breakfast bars, which are basically breakfast biscuits. But if they're being sold to you by a model that's telling you that's what she does in the morning, 
and then biscuits are suddenly back on for breakfast. Um, but let's let's open our eyes and be be serious because the more the more ingredients on the back of the pack, the more likely it is that it's going to be highly processed and not going to feed you. So let's get back to those single ingredient foods that are going to really uh, nourish you and feed you in a way that this kind of stuff just can't. Okay, so number four of the high energy plan. This is eat the rainbow. And this again is something that I'm seeing more on social media as a hashtag I'm seeing at the top of uh, news articles in newspapers and you know um, on lots of media outlets, which is great because it means that it's becoming more mainstream. But what does it mean in reality? Well, it means that you need to eat more color every day. And we have this guideline in the UK of uh, eat five fruit and veg per day. And the, the actual uh, guideline is to, to focus on vegetables over fruits. This got changed a number of years ago to seven, but the campaign has never been very good. Um, and actually the World Health Organize claim that it should be um, 10 per day as a minimum. This is a minimum. And what does a portion actually mean when we think about the rainbow? It's about 80 grams. So that's like the size of an average apple or banana or maybe three tomatoes, you know, three that kind of medium sized tomatoes. And we just need to be eating more color guys. And I think never before have, has health been so, um, you know, the number one on all of our agendas uh, that now we can start to say, well, what are the preventative measures? What are the kind of key elements that not only going to affect your energy today, but your health long term. And it's these guys, these antioxidants that are contained, the vitamins and the minerals that are contained within these colors, which are all unique to the color, hence the reason we have to eat different colors, that, you know, we need to be eating this stuff. So what we did, Graham and I, we wanted to make it really visual, like a powerful visual, so you could actually just look at your plate, or whatever it is that you're kind of serving yourself, and, um, and say, right, is this going to be an energizing meal really quickly? So at the very top level, half of your plate should be rainbow fruit and veggies. And a lot of the time when I said it to people, they're like, what? That's like impossible. It's, it's really, it's not. It's just about having the food in. So you eat good food. If you have good food in the fridge, if you have good food in the cupboards, if you have this color to hand, you're going to eat it because it's there. And the reverse is usually true as well, you know. If those kind of highly processed packaged foods are available to you, especially in a busy working day, then guess what? You're going to eat those instead. But if you have an attractive fruit bowl full of lots of lovely things, you know, you have some nice things in your veg drawer in your fridge, you're going to just eat them because it becomes a time in the day where anything will do. And let's make it something that's going to actually feed you. So, yeah, half of that plate needs to be fruit and veggies. Um, and sometimes there's meals that we just can't make this happen. Maybe we're on the move. We do actually have a whole section within the book, which is all about being out and about, because uh, that's when people said they would most likely um, fall down on these things. But if that's you, then, you know, we don't have to kind of stress about it. We forget, um, you know, picking up something from home. Then it's just the next time you can make that decision and make a change, make it. Think of it as a small upgrade. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if, at the moment, only 1% or 10% of your plate is some color. How do you get it to 20 or 25? So yeah, so firstly, half of it is those rainbow plants. Around 25% is proteins. Think about like a palm-sized amount of protein. This is your fish, your meat, your eggs, your nuts and seeds. Um, and then 25% is these smarter carbohydrates. Smarter in the sense that they're gonna really make you smart make you more intelligent, make you more energized for the afternoon. So these are those what we call complex carbs within nutrition. So they usually come from vegetables, so they're usually darker in color. So they're not the white bread, they're not the white pasta, um, they're not refined food. So things that you know comes within a, um, a packet. So this should um, you know straight away start to make you think just when you look at a plate. And then if you want to make it even better, have a little bit around don't forget some of the stuff that's also going to enhance those foods. So, for example, things like butter, coconut oil, olive oil. Yes, I did just say butter. Butter is an incredible superfood. Um, it has lots of nutrition. It's not to say that our whole plate should be 
but uh, but using it in small quantities, especially with vegetables, helps us to actually obtain more vitamins from them. Other things that are that currently having a real renaissance of fermented foods, they've been around uh, in existence with human beings since the start of time, but now we're, they're kind of trendy. Things like kefir, which you can find in every supermarket, every big supermarket these days, kimchi, sauerkraut, um, just natural yogurt is a fermented food. You know, these things, what they do is they really help our bodies and our microbiome, which is like the living uh, bacteria in our guts, perform better. And when they perform better, again, they feed our brains, they feed our bodies, they feed our energy. So including some of these every day is really helpful. And then the final one, I sometimes call the missing nutrient in so many people that I work with on a coaching um, in a coaching fashion is that they're just dehydrated chronically. It's a really, really small upgrade. Always have a glass of water to hand, carry it with you if you're going to be on the move, and just you know remembering just to stay hydrated because it's not about kind of necking two liters of water at the end of the day. It's actually about um, drinking consistently throughout the day and just ensuring that you're not making a very small judgment error and thinking that you know just because you don't feel thirsty you aren't thirsty um, and perhaps maybe you like coffees and teas you know caffeine takes a lot of water out and again this really affects our energy so when I get people's hydration status what well, good well by the time I see them again the next time they're already feeling better just from being well watered they're like you know plants really uh, that we just need these really simple basic things but again, in our busy lives, in our modern world, some of the simple stuff has kind of gone to the wayside in exchange for perhaps, you know, some of the more trendy diets and, and things that uh, are out these days. So hopefully that's just giving you a little bit of an insight into how to make this happen, how to eat the rainbow. And if you do have any questions, think about those and we'll come to them at the end about this because I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Okay, so. The fifth one and the final one that I'm going to share with you from uh, from the high energy plan is to be label savvy. So I kind of touched a little bit on labels when I was talking about you know avoiding food with its own jingle. And there's lots of different kind of tips that we have within the book around labels. But it's a really simple one is if food has, you know, and you're buying it regularly, more than five ingredients, it's probably already going down this highly processed route. Highly processed food has, generally speaking, not all, you know, but generally speaking, a lot of energy zappers. So things like hydrogenated vegetable oils, which the body just doesn't know what to do with. Um, you know, it's not food, it's like Franken food, food like substances. And so because of that, it takes a lot of energy to make the, that particular food harmless to the body firstly, and then to get rid of it. And what it doesn't do in the midst of that is feed you. And so whilst it's doing all of that, guess what? Your energy has gone from your brain and your heart and your vitality into your digestion to deal with a food that's, like I say, it's created in a lab, it's not created in a kitchen. So just really simply turning it over, more than five ingredients, hmm, okay, do I need it, do I not need it? Yeah, so, you know, I still understand the ingredients. That's the second one that I always say. Do you actually understand what the ingredients are? If they're things like olive oil, rosemary, um, you know, wheat flour, you, you, you can read them. And they're not these very long, jargony, scientific terms. And that's also going to give you an idea that your body's going to be able to recognize those food components and do something with it. And then the final one around labels is sugar content. So I haven't mentioned sugar yet, but sugar is really quite important when we think about energy. We absolutely need sugar, but it's it comes packaged in lots of nice ways already. Like it's, you know, there's there's some in the apple that perhaps you've had today. There's some a little bit in beetroot that you've eaten, you know, so it comes in really neat packages so we can take on enough. What we don't need necessarily regularly, not always regularly, is added sugars. So if if sugar is in the first three ingredients, that means that it's one of the main ingredients because they're listed in the order of quantity in the food. And so if it's at the top, then you know it's basically sugar <laughs> that you're buying, but it may be maybe a product that you didn't even think of would contain sugar. Things like pasta sauces or chili sauces, you know, 
savoury stuff. We think that these are savoury, yet they've sneaked some things in there that then make us want to eat more, make us always buy it. And actually, they're kind of uh, messing with our brain chemistry in order to do that. So we need to get savvier with the label, turn it over. And like I say, you don't need to be a nerd. You don't need to be like super stringent about these things. But what you do need to do is just to be regularly um, checking these. And like I say, if there's a lot of things that you're eating with lots of labels on every day, which one is the worst offender? I dare you to go and check. If you're at home today, go to the cupboard in a moment and the thing that you're eating every day, check where sugar features. Check how many ingredients there are. Can you actually decipher those ingredients? And, you know, make some decisions yourself because you have the knowledge, the intelligence to do that. So that's five from the high energy plan. I'm hoping that it's giving you a little bit of an insight into my approach, our approach for how to have the energy, and also the work that uh, Graham and I do. So as you can see, there's a few more in the plan uh, that if you're interested, you can get hold of the book. Okay, so questions and answers, let's have a look. Okay, that's great. Um, thanks very much, Colette, for a really insightful presentation. So we're now going to have a short Q&A session. There's still time to submit questions if you want to, so please pop them into the questions box. And we'll try and get through as many as we can in the next 10 minutes or so. Okay, Colette, um, the first question is, is more a statement, really, um, which came in quite early on during your presentation. Is lunch mm -hmm. like Pavlov's dog, that we expect to be tired after lunch, and even if we don't eat, we will still be tired because we expect it? Mm, I'd say, I don't think you can ever rule out something like Pavlov's dog but I don't think that um I do think that a lot of food choices that people that people are making is essentially contributing to that tiredness and the food choice and the way that they eat the food so like I say they could have the most perfect meal but they're eating it whilst on a conference call the food just sits in the stomach by the way I didn't mention this earlier and starts to uh kind of ferment in the stomach, which then gives people like bloating and perhaps reflux, all this stuff that gives you brain fog and taxes your energy because your body is waiting for a moment of calm to start to digest. And then there's also the other option where people have just chosen something that's very, perhaps very carbohydrate heavy, refined carbohydrates, you know, a white baguette with, um, I don't know, cheese in the middle with nothing, no color and a pack of, bag of crisps. That is not gonna set you up for an afternoon of absolute focus, concentration, and uh, you know, top cognition. So yes, that could be like a very small factor. No one's ever mentioned that before. Um, but also what is good is that we could use on the flip side of the Pavlov's dog, is that when you're tuning in to choosing how you want to feel and you look at the food and you make a change and you go, ha ha, that is a really good change, I'm gonna feel better. You will feel better for the change, but you'll also feel better for recognition of that you've made a change too. So you get like double whammy. So you could use the, okay. the, the Pavlov's dog uh, example in reverse. Okay. Um, there's a number of questions actually around hydration. So first one is, is there a general or typical recommended daily intake of water? Yes. Um, so within the recommended daily intake of water, what I would say is that it depends. It depends on how warm it is. And today we have a warm day in the UK. Hallelujah. Um, uh, but it also depends, you, you know, how you're feeling, whether you're, you know, maybe becoming a little bit unwell, whether you've been talking on uh, Zoom calls all day and, ex uh, you know, basically expelling lots of hydration, whether you went for a run first thing. So it depends. So what we have, and we have on the website, actually, um, how to have the energy dot com uh, is a very small resource and it's called believe it or not taking the pee because it all depends on the, the actual color of, of of your pee um whether you are properly hydrated or not so that will give you a range uh going from very dark colored to to you know to, to kind of clear like this glass of water that i have here and this is over hydrated um and this so this for example is not what you want um you want to actually have a very very light color uh, to your urine because that then means that actually it's doing its job and you're not just flushing out all of the minerals um, and other things that are essential for the body just by having too much water so it depends there isn't there's there's a good ballpark of that two liters 
Um, but like I say, some people need more, some people need a little bit less. Um, that's the best way uh, to actually uh, understand your hydration status is to perhaps download our little chart and see what you think. Okay. Um, <laughs> so relating to sugar, how do you feel about zero sugar drinks such as Coke Zero? And, and I guess the flip side of that is how do you feel about energy drinks? Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, so energy drinks, absolutely not. Um, they're the opposite of energy, in fact. Um, you know, there's, there's a reason they have to come with health warnings because they damage your health. And quite seriously, I think they shouldn't even be on shelves um, because that's the, you know, the, the, they're not just full of caffeine. They have sorts of, lots of other stuff in them as well, which has a cocktail, just don't feed us, and uh, nourish us in any way, shape or form. So I'd say avoid always. But things like fizzy drinks, again, come with a bit of a warning. Um, and zero things, so things with no sugar, tend to come with sweeteners. And sweeteners have always been controversial. In some countries, they've been banned and then re-entered and banned again you know, by different food administrations. Um, but however we look at it, there's definitely um, more emerging um, advice around sweeteners, which is that it can actually affect our brains. Um, it can by, by upsetting our microbiome in our stomach. So literally it affects our brain chemistry from doing that. Um, so occasionally it's not a problem, but if you, it's something that you're having every day at the side of your desk at home, um, you know, something that's a regular feature in your shopping basket, I'd say leave them out. Have them occasionally if you're out and you know, you really fancy it, but generally speaking, avoid. Okay. Um, question, yeah, brilliant. Okay. Uh, got some questions around the best time of the day to eat the main meal, really. So, the first one is it better to eat the main meal at lunchtime or at the end of the daytime? I personally prefer to eat the main meal at lunchtime because it gives me more energy. Obviously, not always easy to eat the main meal at lunchtime, though. Yeah, it's a really, really good question because I think for so long we've been told that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And actually, Whilst I don't think it's necessarily the most important, I do think it's really important for setting the tone of the day. So if you make a good decision first off, you're likely to make better decisions as the day goes on also. Um, but equally, yes, lunch could be so much better for so many people. It tends to be um, kind of an afterthought. Whereas if you think about it a bit more and beef, like literally you know, adding more things into lunch, then you are going to feel better and you are going to be able to rest better later on. Um, if you're finishing quite late, you know, lots of my clients have busy evenings, maybe with children or just family or whatever that may be, and they're eating really late and then trying to get to bed. And it's just really um, not conducive to having that rest. Um, so, yeah, if you could definitely make lunch better by adding more of those things, those rainbows into there, more of the protein at lunchtime, um, then that's really going to help with your energy, but also help you rest in the evening as well. And so that's the, that's the, that's the challenge is um, to, to make it a better meal rather than an afterthought. And it will make a big difference then to what you choose for dinner as well and how much you eat at dinner. So it'll have a good knock on effect. Hope that answers the question too. Okay, thanks Colette. Um, I think this next question or comment um, is a sign of the times really. Uh, it has been years, years since I've eaten breakfast and it is very rare that I have lunch during the week. What would you recommend? To someone to mm -hmm. ease back into good eating habits when they struggle to eat at these times? Yeah, that's a really, really powerful question. And it's actually one that we address in the book because uh, I've come across it a number of times. Um, so the first thing is I would never make people eat if they're not hungry. And you're not the only person that's perhaps not ready for breakfast. But there can be something around habit there, you know, that you've just never had anything. So then your body's not expecting it. Therefore, the hunger doesn't kick in. Um, and often it's because people start with things like caffeine, which is quite satiating. Maybe it's, in, you know, a coffee or something. And so they think that they're not hungry, no, don't need the food um, and just get on with the day. So starting with something like a glass of water and giving yourself a bit of time um, and maybe something small like a handful of nuts and a piece of fruit or a small yogurt, you know, natural yogurt. Um, and trying just small things to see if it has an impact and see if you are actually do become hungry and do then enjoy that food, um, then that can be a place to start. And the next thing I would say um, about lunch is that, yeah, going all day, again, is, is you know, it's, it's not become unusual. 
Um, and obviously there are some things like fasting that have gained a lot of interest these days. People say, well, I'm fasting, but you're fasting involuntarily. You're fasting because you just don't have time. You have the capacity to make a meal or have a meal because you, you know, your schedule is back to back perhaps. Um, and also fasting works um, you know, in certain scenarios and not all scenarios. Um, and especially when we're stressed and we're also hungry and not even realized, thinking back to those judges and their judgments, um, you know, we start to get edgy to make different decisions on things. So yeah, I think um, starting with a time where you, you give yourself just even a small lunch, a small lunch break and the opportunity to eat and come down. Um, and if you are on back to back calls and you only have a very small window, that it is become more difficult because your body is kind of in this doing state which is what we're in most of the day. Um, and in order to get into this parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest, we have to calm down a little bit. So for people that really struggle to eat during a working day, I say, could you take a five, 10 minute walk before lunch um, without your phone? Um, or do something mundane, you know, something that's not work beforehand, because then your body has a chance to actually recognize how it's feeling. And so it's giving it that opportunity for the natural biological processes to do their reminders, you know, you're hungry now, please eat. Um, and giving yourself that little bit of space within the day because you're a priority within that working day. Hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, there's one or two questions about fasting. Would you recommend intermittent fasting seems to be a theme that's um, popping up here? Yeah, and, and you know, the past few years, it's become quite a buzzword again, and one of those trends um, that we've seen. Um, and fasting accompanied with the right kind of knowledge and the right context can be incredibly successful. Um, but if you're in a very high output job, you're exercising early on in the day, you're actually quite stressed, you didn't sleep well last night, the last thing you should do is fast. And so it's people about having the, that knowledge and that you know the context of that knowledge in order to apply it so it's going to be most effective for you and um, you know I've worked with people that are so flat and so um, deprived of nutrients because what it does it puts pressure on the other meal or maybe the one meal a day that some people are having to get all those nutrients that you need um, and I'd really struggle to get all nutrients that I need in a day in one meal uh, you know maybe two meals so it's like a, a longer fast um, but still you're putting challenges in place and so there needs to be a context consideration with fasting. So it can have very good uh, you know, effects on energy and on health but with the right context. So I guess it's just about learning a little bit more about it if it's something that you're going to integrate into your day-to-day -day, uh, life. Okay, great, thank you. Um, do you have some suggestions for healthy food on the go? Yes, I do. We actually have a section in the book called The Portables. Um, and again, you eat good food if you have good food in. If you're leaving early in the morning, if you've got lots of stuff on, if the food isn't in, you're not going to take it. And then you're going to be left victim to, I don't know, the train station shop that's open or, you know, a sandwich shop that's nearby where you, where, where you are or whatever. So having some good, solid portable stuff that's in the cupboard, in the fruit bowl that you can just throw in your bag every morning or any time that you're going to be on the go is the way to do it. Take it with you because this is going to ensure you get fed during the working day. So any simple things, some things like harder fruits and vegetables like apples and uh, satsumas and things like that, right to your, you know, your dried stuff that has a long shelf life that could sit in your bag, like a big bag of nuts, almonds, walnuts. Walnuts are really, really important for our brains. We've got uh, omega-3s in. It's got the highest content of omega-3 in um, any nut form. So a great one to have in our, in our bag. Um, and to actually then some of these bars that we can buy. Um, you know, I'm not against anything being processed. I'm just saying that, you know, these things tend to have longer shelf lives. And if you've already checked the labels, it's just a handful of labels, you can throw those in. Um, one of the things that I used to travel with were things like avocados. Uh, so I knew that I could always get some good fats in. Um, and I joke about it in my book that literally I would used to open it with a business card at places and be scooping it out with a spoon or something. Um, people were like, what the hell are you doing with that? And it's like, these sandwiches are just rubbish. There's just nothing to eat on them. So I'm eating my avocado. Um, so you don't have to go, you don't have to quite be opening my avocados with business cards, but think about the stuff that has longer shelf life, but it's pretty good, nuts, seeds, things like that. Um, 
and crackers, you know, good crackers, like I say, ones that you can just check the, the label on, um, that are gonna give you a, a bit, bit of a boost and some food in there. Um, and then obviously, if you're gonna be out all day and it's a regular thing, actually doing a packed lunch um, and making it look a little bit like uh, that plate that we showed earlier. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be beautiful, it needs to be neutral, not beautiful, so just, you don't have to chop everything in a beautiful kind of uniform manner. I just throw a whole pepper in often and eat it like an apple. I don't cut my tomatoes in my lunchbox. I just throw it all in and then over the day, perhaps I'll get somewhere where I can sit and I have portable um, uh, knife and fork now. I invested in one of those. Um, and, you know, so just thinking about having that good stuff in that's going to create that high energy plate for you. That okay. Helps. Um, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, how do you feel about meal replacements for weight control and he healthy vitamins and minerals, things like Huel? Things like what, sorry? Huel, it says H U E L. Yeah, Huel. Um, highly processed stuff, um, and I would say occasionally, not a problem, but I would not be replacing meals because nothing replaces food. If we could, then things like Huel will have um, taken over the world by now when they, you know, they first came out. That's just one of the brands that claims to add in all of these things. But the issue is with food is that uh, there's, it's always so broad in terms of its nutrients. Like a simple carrot has such a broad range of nutrients that you're never going to get that range within an energy drink. Um, when you've you know, built a salad, you'll never get the same uh, kind of power from it. Um, but they, that can be convenient. Um, and as a one-off, if it's going to be that day, I'd rather you have that than have nothing. Um, so it's a kind of like having that mindset of food is always first, food first mindset. And then these kind of, um, and they're quite expensive products as well, can feature, you know, in a very dotted kind of way, very, you know, interspersed around those really good meals that you're eating. Great. Um, just got time for a couple more questions, actually, Claire, and they're very okay. similar. So I'm going to read them out one after the other so okay. so hi Colette, fair presentation thank you any tips for ways of weaving re relaxation into my day with a busy job full house and small children and the second mm. question is any comments about exercise in combination with energy and food and timings of all these mm. absolutely yeah yeah and i totally get those both of those questions the first one is yeah, you've got to weave within the day some pauses um, because, you know, having back to back sessions, I look at people's calendars often and they share them with me and they are crazy. Um, you know, when do people go to the bathroom? When do you actually just stand up um, and move? Uh, so, you know, looking at your schedule and being realistic about is that actually going to serve your energy or is it going to zap it? You get to choose how you want to feel making things like sections within your day shorter so we automatically put an hour into people's day today you know we're going to be finishing with before the hour so you've got those minutes to make yourself a drink and um, get a nice snack do a quick stretch these are the things that are going to actually help you with stress management in the long term um, but i do have a really nice one minute exercise because I, I also um, coach around my topic of mindfulness as well and meditation and I always say if you can find if you can't find one minute for yourself, then we need to have a really serious conversation. So, um, yeah, 60 seconds on your timer. Close your eyes, sit in a comfortable position. Just, you know, you don't have to take care of the time. You're something else's. And just for that one minute, observe and count the, the sounds around you. So you're just tuning into one sense. So the sounds, your body, even in that very short amount of time, will try and twitch and go off that one topic, but that's a really good one minute exercise. Um, so hopefully, um, give it a go, that's called Audio Disconnect. And the other one just around you was asking about movement. Movement is incredibly important for energy. Of course, I, talk, I focus on food and the way that we conduct our day around food, um, but within those elements, as I said, your body has to come down in order to actually digest food. Um, you know, we are engineered to move. That's what our whole body is engineered for. And yet we, we sit on the biggest muscle of the day all day. So we have to create um, opportunistic movement opportunities throughout the day. So how can you get up more? Is it that you have a standing up desk that you intersperse sitting down? Can you do some walk and talk meetings? 
you know, you don't do you need to be behind a screen all the time, or could you be taking a walk? Um, having those moments in between uh, the the calls that you're doing or the work that you're doing, so maybe you can do a quick stretch. Um, you know, we don't we don't need to be necessarily fitness coaches to know that rolling our shoulders forward and back and our necks like to one side and then the other mindfully for a few minutes and repeating those moves will make us feel better so think about opportunistic movement throughout the day and how that can feature and how you can engineer your working day in order to be more compliant uh, with that because like I say how brilliant do you want to be if you want to be as brilliant as you possibly can then the brilliance lies in those daily choices and you get to choose those Okay, that's great. Um, that's brilliant, Colette. Some some really great questions, some great answers, and some really sound advice. So thank you very much for that. Um, so pleasure. that's all thank the time you. we have today for our webinar. Um, I'd like to say thank you to Colette again for today's presentation and for CIM London for organising the event. We do hope you'll find it interesting and worthwhile. Our next webinar, Express How to Build a Global Brand the Vimto Way, is on Wednesday, the 28th of July at 1 p.m., hosted by CIM Northwest. You'll find details listed on the events page on the CIM website, where you'll also be able to register for the session. So on behalf of CIM, thank you once again, Colette, for a really good presentation. And thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Leave your screens, get up, go and walk around, um, and have a good afternoon. Goodbye to everybody. <laughs>